Hey guys, well, a little bit of an early success. I wasn't expecting this. Um, I was sort of <laughs> expecting carp later on. But I've had a beautiful bonus fish. A lovely, a lovely beautiful tench. Now, it's not huge, but I do think they're absolutely beautiful fish. Caught on sticky baits, manila boilies. I knew the rod I've got uh, tiger nuts. Um, but really pleased with this. I think they're just beautiful. Absolutely stunning. All right, let's return him back. Hi. I'm not down on the river for a change. I'm not fly fishing. I've come to uh, Abrook Pond, which is my club water. I'm a bailiff here. And occasionally, not very often, I like to come down here and do some carp fishing. So if you don't like carp fishing, I'm sorry this isn't a video for you. My back is still hurting, as you may have seen in the last fly fishing uh, video. So I thought I'd come down here, spend a couple of nights. I know it's stupid. I've got a bad back and I want a couple of nights out on a bed chair. But I've come out. Now, if you just see me, I've had that lovely little tench. Not big. Uh, I'm going to guess around about three, three and a half pounds, something like that. But I love catching tench. I think they're the prettiest fish. I'm here to catch carp, but if I catch tench, I'm more than happy. Now, I'm not one to tell you how to fish. I'm not a carp fishing expert, but I just thought I'd tell you what I'm using. Um, and this is my rig. I'm not sure how well this will show up. What I've got is a bit of fluorocarbon and then some braid. So it's a combi rig. I've then got some shrink tube onto the hook. And then I have a pop-up. You can see there. Hopefully you can see that there. Uh, a pop-up. And I'm using, uh, it's not an advert, but it's what I use. Uh, sticky manila boilies. That's what I caught the tench on. And on my other rod I'm using uh, tiger nuts. Also popped up two bits of tiger nut, which I, I may show you this. Uh, two bits of tiger nut with a bit of cork between them to pop them up. And what I'm going to do where I caught the tench is up against the lilies. I'll cast out there, you'll see in a moment. I'm not putting out loads of boilies um, because well, it's quite a big uh, area of water, but the fish patrol around the pads. I don't need to bring the fish in. What I do need to do is get the fish's attention and get them to take my hook bait. So for me, if the fish are in the area, there's no point in putting out masses of bait, feeding them off or spooking them off with too much bait. So I'm just using a PVA bag with a few boilies and some of these boilies are whole, some of them are crushed not using any crusher or anything technical, just squeeze them in between my fingers. So some are in halves, some are in uh, crumbs, and some whole ones. And what I do is I get my hook, and then I feed it through the PVA bag, twist it a few times. And one more. And that's it. Oop, no, I want the hook inside the bag for the last one. There you go. And also the bag, I've nicked some holes in it. So when it does get cast out and goes into the water, it doesn't hold up in the air because there's a bubble, um, sorry, hold up in the water because there's a bubble of air. It will slowly sink down and then it will just melt and disperse the boilers fairly tight around my hook bait. So it worked, I've got one tench and uh, I wasn't really expecting any fish. I was just actually having a little bit of a snooze. But yeah, lovely. It's a nice place to come and relax. There's only myself and one other angler, uh, the head bailiff over the other side. This is about, it's like three acre water and it's a Saturday and just two, two fishing it. Um, I was going to fish the backwater where quite often I fished, um, but it's just too much. Um, the, the swims are too overgrown. I didn't bring my garden shears to trim the swim out a bit for me. And also there's lots of mosquitoes, but more importantly, there's no signs of fish around there. So rather than waste my time, I've come to this swim and it's probably more comfortable. There's lots of space for me. There's no issue about casting. I'm casting to the lilies, but I haven't got any of the lilies to deal with in between me and the main uh, uh, bed of pads out there. There's certainly fish moving out there. 
but also there's no mosquitoes for me to deal with here because there's a breeze and there's no stagnant water so it's much more comfortable so let's put this on I've got a, a quick change link put the sleeve up onto the quick change and then there you go the lead on a release system all right let's cast it out There's the lily pads. Uh, the right hand rod is over in the little bay over there. I hope you can see it. That's where the tench from. Uh, and that's on Manila boilies, a uh, snowman rig. And then to the left of the pads, I've got uh, double uh, tiger nuts with a cork um, popping them up. And there, there's a bar that runs across. Basically the bar follows the pads and it starts to deepen there. So I've got the tiger nuts just in the deeper water and both spots um, produce uh, fish. But I'm keeping with the mix of the two, the boilers and the tiger nuts, because I'm not sure what the carp are interested in. Tench obviously like the manila uh, boilers, but when I know what the carp want, then I'll switch both rods to that. But in fact, I have caught carp in here on manila pop-ups. Right, this is my shelter. So I don't use uh, an enclosed bivvy, um, even in the winter, because I like to have an open shelter. I've got a four season sleeping bag, which has got a fleece blanket over it. And with that, I can sleep in extremely low uh, temperatures. And then I just bulk it up with clothing. But I like to be able to see the water. I like to be able to look for fish and just enjoy the surroundings. I hate being enclosed in a bivvy. And also if I get a run, <laughs> Um, I get a fish, I like to be able to throw myself out of the sleeping bag. Right, scales are zeroed. It's about half eleven, guys. Okay. He did a little dinky. All right. Yeah. I don't normally weigh fish of this size, but I just fancy seeing how this one weighed. Let's just make sure I've got my eye in. Lovely common. It's about half past 11, as I said. There we go. Nice little common. Caught on the tiger nuts. I did change the rig. Made it a little bit more delicate. Um, but I'm very pleased with this little chap. Very pleased indeed. All right, what we'll do is we'll get him back. Make sure his fins are all right. All right, let's return him. Ah, thank you, mate. There we go, it's facing the right way. Sure you guys can pick up. Is letting him recover. It won't take long, he's feeling quite feisty. There we go. Thank you very much. Off he goes to Sulk. Right, I want his big brother.
guys, what we've got is a, just on a run. The carp has just found a snag. So, it doesn't seem to be running very much in a minute. So, I'm trying to get some line just to see if it can find its way out of the snag. If not, I'm going to have to go and grab the boat. Target us again. They're trying to find the boat. Let's go get the boat. Well, I made the right call. So, the fish did find a snag. I've no idea what it was. It's not a snag I've experienced before. This is um, this, uh, Abrook Pond is an old clay pit. And when they flooded it, they left an awful lot of debris in here. There's cables out there. Um, we've pulled out some old um, parts of carts that have just uh, broken up and rotted away. There's boards out there. We know over that side there's some fence posts, um, very short, which have gone a long way into the clay. Some of which we've got out and some which we can't just get out. So that fish, um, lovely run on the tiger nets. It tore off but it did find a snag and I was fast asleep when the run came I just had time to flick the camera on hit the run and yep, that fish found a snag and I was connected to it and um, as a bailiff I can't have a fish being tethered so my first thought was I'm going to go grab the boat as you heard me say and I would have brought the boat round picked up my rod and then I would have taken myself towards the fish and freed the fish from the snag because where I'm fishing I think it's maybe about four foot deep so I would have been able to prod around and, and free it. However I was walking towards the boat and I was waking up and gathering my thoughts and starting to think a little bit more clearly rather than being too enthusiastic and you know yeah, thinking properly. I left the boat and I came back to my swim. The reason being is because I don't have a life jacket, um, a buoyancy aid or anything like that. There is the head bailiff Terry fishing the other side of the lake but I know that to try and raise him would have been near impossible. So I'd have been going out on a boat on my own without any um, buoyancy aid protection and there are parts of this lake which are quite deep and it's not a clever thing to do really is it to go out into a lake on a boat which is made for which is only used for maintenance to try and free a fish this is a barbless uh, hook's water so in reality the fish would have freed itself if I'd have pulled for a break and the line has snapped. So what I decided to do was to come back to my swim, slack the line off and see if the fish would have freed itself. If not, I'd have had to pull for a break um, and knowing I've got barbless hooks, the fish would have freed itself. Well, I left it a little while, maybe about five minutes. I thought, all right, that's long enough. So I've tightened the line and I've seen to the snag but I couldn't feel the fish so right okay let's pull for a break and if the fish is still there it will be able to free itself from the barbless hooks I've got a lead 
which is free running. So the fish wouldn't have been tethered to that. <coughs> so pull for the break and well I've got everything back minus the fish. So the fish wasn't tethered, the fish freed itself from the barbless hooks. I got everything back and more importantly I haven't risked my life using the boat without buoyancy aid. That's a bit of a shame. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reel in what's happening with this line. That line's doing a bit of a dance, I'm not sure if that was a line bite. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reel in both rods. I think I might do a little bit of stalking for an hour or so, rest this area, and then come back to it. There's been a bit of disturbance now, so rather than throw a load of leads out, yeah, I'm going to rest the swims and do a little bit of stalking. That's a shame, no fish tethered, I've not risked my neck. Let's go and find one somewhere else. Right, so this is, the, this is the second swim I've come into this morning for stalking. This is my favourite swim actually. I put some tigerness out uh, when I did a, a quick walk round. And I left this area and fished another swim. But there's no activity going on over there at all. I think I was probably a little bit late for the feeding this morning. But I've come round here and I've been watching for about five, five minutes. And I've just seen a tail swirl off the end of these reeds. So I've just dropped my tiger net rig off, off the end of the reeds. Right, I've flicked it just a bit further past and then reeled in. To the end of the reeds, and I just threw out about half a dozen tiger nuts around my hook bait. That was a bit of a bank. I've also just thrown another half dozen tiger nuts just to my left. So I'm going to give it about 15 minutes. If nothing happens, I'm going to go back to my swim and fish properly. <laughs> but by which time, my swim would have rested for, not rested for long, just enough for the commotion to have died down. And also I'm going to check my uh, boily rig because I had a few knocks in the night and I think I should have had um, a couple of fish off that spot. So I just don't think the rig was quite right so I'm going to have a look at that. Well, typically this isn't quite working out how I thought it might, so I'm just going to turn the camera off to save the battery, put some more tiger nuts out. I think I'm going to give it five more minutes and then we're going to go back to the main swim.
Well, wasn't expecting uh, another one just yet. Getting a little bit bigger. So the last one was eight pound. Had the tench and also a lost one. And now I've just hooked into this beautiful, he's gonna go mental, I think. Beautiful common. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful fish? Absolutely glorious. So I've already weighed him. I couldn't get his head up at all. He fought like a demon. It's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. <laughs> Alright, let's get him back. We catch him and return them. He's not going to need long by the looks of it. No, I think he's ready to go. Go on, lift your head up. Here we are again. So I was on the tiger nuts on the left hand rod. I switched that one over to the manila boilers and that's what I've just got this one on. Um, 14 pound. Oh, there we go. Another beautiful common. Fought like a demon. Because I've got them on a tight line so they can't get into the pads. Um, they fight like demons under the rod tip, but you can see why. Lovely big tail. Another beautiful fish. A lot of commons in this water. All right, let's get him back. He's gorgeous. Beautiful scales. Let's show him again. Oh, hopefully you've seen this. You get a good view of him. Scales are absolutely amazing. Fish are in great condition here as well. Oh, he doesn't need to rest at all. Gone. Yep, I think he's definitely the biggest one so far. We're going to find out the moment of truth in a second. Again, he fought so hard under the rod tip. Let's pop that over there. 
go. Get this out of the way. So one thing I do is, um, well, what I do is once the, uh, the fish is in the landing net, I then leave it in the net just to sort myself out. So then I've got everything to hand. Okay, let's see what we've got. Yep, 16 pound one ounce. We're getting bigger. I don't think I'm going to see the uh, the glorious 20 today. Slide you down. Calm, 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 calm. If you're wondering why I've turned him around, because obviously I'm going to show you his best side. <laughs> I'm not going to see either in a minute. Okay, do this quickly so I can get him back foot into the water because obviously that's where he wants to be. So there you go. There's a nice 16 pound common there from our brook pond. I'm not sure quite how many I've had now, but yeah, he's the largest. A couple of 14s, what the sixth I think it was, the tench, and now we're on this uh, 16 pound one ounce. I think there's a good chance of a few more as well. Beautiful. Right, let's get him back because that's obviously where he wants to be. His head's that way. Don't think he's going to want to rest for very long in here. No. Well, I thought I'd do the outro now. Um, it's, I don't know, I think it's about um, 8 o'clock in the evening. Uh, the light's starting to go. Well, I'm slightly earlier than that, actually. Uh, the light's starting to go. I'm leaving the lake early. Uh, I've got work tomorrow, so I'm leaving about half past 6 in the morning. So I won't be doing an outro with them because I'll be packing up and all that sort of excitement. I've just lost a uh, fish uh, in the pads. Um, so I'm just waiting for the ducks to go away so I can put my rig back out um, and hopefully I'm going to get a few more through the night. So thanks ever so much if you watch this and if I get any more fish then I'll try and tag them on to the end but if not thanks ever so much I've really enjoyed it. Thank you guys.